Hey everyone, Dr. Kennedy here with a great AP Calculus review lesson. I'm going to do number four from 2018 free response questions. All you have to do is Google it. It's readily available on the internet. Let's do it. Okay, so let's take a look together at number four. Uh, they give you a table, right? Sometimes uh, functions are given as tables, sometimes graphs, sometimes equations. And part A wants us to use the data in the table to estimate h prime, the derivative of h, at 6. Well, notice how convenient 6 is not in our table. So we're going to estimate the derivative at 6 by finding the slope, the average rate of change between 5 and 7, right? So remember what slope is, change in y over change in x. So I'm going to do 11 minus 6 divided by 7 minus 5, and I get 5 over 2. Now, if they ask for units, you got to put units, right? So the units here are meters per year, right? I divided 11 minus 6 meters over 7 minus 5 years, so meters per year. And they also want us to interpret the meaning. So what's the meaning? Well, that's the rate of change of the height of the tree. So I'm going to write down the tree is growing, or you could say the height of the tree is increasing by 5 over 2 or 2.5. Ah, that's the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 6, which is in its sixth year. Let's take a look at Part B. Part B wants us to explain why there must be at least one time t between 2 and 10, such that h prime of t equals 2. And this here is going to be the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem says that if a function, here it's h of t, is both continuous and differentiable on an interval, which it is. They tell us that it's a twice differentiable function. That just means you can differentiate it twice, like a twice baked potato. And if it's differentiable on an interval, it must be continuous on the interval. You can't have something that's not continuous but differentiable. All right? So the conclusion of the theorem is that there must be at least one point on that interval at which the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. All right, so the regular slope between two points, change in function over change in x, is equal to the derivative, which is instantaneous. So what I need to do is find out where is the average rate of change equal to 2, right? So if I just look through this table and I, I do in my head change in y over change in x, Ah, there it is. 6 minus 2 divided by 5 minus 3. That comes out to 4 halves, better known as 2. So because the average rate of change between 3 and 5 is 2, the mean value theorem guarantees that there must be at least one point where h prime, the instantaneous rate of change, is equal to 2. Let's take a look at part C. Part C wants a trapezoidal sum, one of my favorite things. Now, remember what a calculus trapezoid looks like, right? It's tilted 90 degrees. It's rotated 90 degrees from what you saw in geometry. It's a right trapezoid. The base is what used to be the height, and the two parallel heights are what used to be base 1 and base 2. So I'm going to call it f of x1 and f of x2 because they're vertical, so they're f of x values. And the base, the bottom, is now delta x because it's along the horizontal axis, right? So the area, the calculus formula for area of a trapezoid is delta x times f of x1 plus f of x2 all divided by 2. This is the same as the geometry formula that you might know, which is height over 2 times base 1 plus base 2, or some equivalent form of that, right? Okay, so I'm just going to go piece by piece, interval by interval, because the delta x is not uniform, so I can't factor it out, right? So from 2 to 3, the delta x is 1. 1 1.5 and 2 are the two f of x values. Those are like the two ge geometric bases, right? Uh, the second interval, notice these overlap, by the way, is from 3 to 5. So delta x is 2, and the two bases are 2 and 6 divided by 2. The third trapezoid is from 5 to 7, so delta x is going to be 2 again and 6 and 11 are my two f of x values. And I'll simplify these in a minute. And then the final trapezoid is from 7 to 10. So that's got a delta x of 3, and 11 and 15 as the two values there.
Oh, wait a second. Don't forget it was the average height, right? So they want the average value of the height. Average value, remember, is one over b minus a, which in this case is 10 minus two, so that's eight, times the integral from a to b, two to 10, of h of t dt. All right, and I'm gonna use my trapezoidal sum as the estimate, so I'm gonna write squiggly equal signs, which means approximately one eighth times the sum of all these numbers. All right, we're gonna leave it like that. I'm happy with that answer, are you? Let's look at part D. Okay, part D, which is usually the hardest part, but don't get scared. Feel the fear and then do it anyway. The height can be modeled by, oh great, they give us an equation this time where X is the diameter of the base. So X stands for diameter here. When the tree is 50 meters tall, the diameter of the base of the tree is increasing at a rate of 0.03. They're giving us a rate. According to this model, what is the rate of change of the height of the tree with respect to time in meters per year at the time when the tree is 50 meters tall? This is called a related rates problem. So I'm going to map out the problem. X stands for diameter. This comes directly from the wording of the problem. When G of X, when the height is 50, remember G is an equation for height also. Uh, dx dt, the rate of change of the diameter is given as 0.03 meters per year. And they want us to find dg dt, or g prime of x. When I'm doing a related rates problem though, I like to do d function dt. It's clearer notation, it's change in function over change in time, because everything is a function of time that's given to us. And you remember that it's slope if you do change in function over change in time, right? A derivative is really just an instantaneous slope. All right, so dg dt, I'm gonna have to use the quotient rule since this is a quotient, right? Low d high minus high d low over low low. I like to yodel it. Low d high minus high d low all over low low because YOLO, right? Okay, so here, here I am doing it. One plus x times d low d high. The derivative of the top is 100 times dx dt, right? Remember, that's the chain rule. x is a function of time also. Minus 100x times dx dt all over 1 plus x squared. That's low low. Uh, now what am I going to do? G of x is 50. Let's see, x is the diameter. dx dt is 0.03. I have that. Oh, so I've got to set g of x equal to 50 to find out what x equals at that time, right? So here's an equation I could solve. I'm going to cross multiply and distribute. 50 plus 50x equals 100x. Let's see, subtract 50x over to the other side. And I'm going to divide. I get x equals 1. What an easy number to plug in. Only thing easier would be 0. So 1 plus 1 is 2, so I get 200 dx dt minus 100 dx dt. And I can plug in 0.03 for dx dt, I was given that. So that's just going to be 3 up there, if you can follow that math. 200 minus 100 is 100, times 0.03 is 3. So I get 3 fourths. So dg dt, the rate of change of the height of the tree, when the tree is 50, is it meters tall, is three-fourths meters per year since it was a rate of change, dgdt. And that's the answer. All right, everyone, I hope you had fun, as much fun as I did. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all of my content as it's released. See you later. May the math be with you.